Hello everyone and welcome to another photography tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use extension tubes for macro photography. An extension tube really is just another way of achieving macro images or macro like images without having to go to the expense of a macro lens. So here I have an extension tube and it's just an element, there's no glass and all you do is fit it between the camera body and the lens and I'd say it's just a really good way of getting into macro photography, really good way to get you started. And the way the extension tube works, it increases the distance that the lens is from the camera sensor. So it makes it further away from the camera and what that does is to reduce the minimum focusing distance. So on your lens you'll have a minimum focusing distance which means you can't focus any closer than that. If you add the extension tube it actually reduces that allowing you to go in closer and making it more suitable for macro photography. There are different sizes of extension tube, so the, the bigger the extension tube, the greater the magnification that you're going to be able to achieve. And in terms of compatibility, you definitely want to check this out. So the cheaper extension tubes, you may only be able to use them on a manual basis. If you spend a bit more money, particularly if you get the, the manufacturer's extension tube, then you'll still be able to get automatic function. The camera will talk to the lens and you'll get exposure control. And also, quite importantly, you'll get autofocus as well. Um, so I'm using a Canon 25mm extension tube. That allows me to use automatic exposure, like aperture priority, and it also still allows me to use autofocus to focus as well. Um, in the past I've used cheaper ones, I think I've used 13mm and 21mm as well, but at the moment I'm using the Canon 25mm. There are some important disadvantages to talk about uh, with this technique and the first one is vignetting. So if you add an extension tube onto your lens you can get what's called vignetting which is where the corners of the image kind of go a little bit darker. If you use something like a 12mm extension tube it's probably not going to be too much of an issue. I doubt you'd notice at all. I think once you get up to about 20mm you're much more likely to see vignetting. A really important disadvantage with the extension tube is loss of light. So by moving the lens away from the camera sensor you're actually increasing the aperture and that's letting in less light. So this can be a problem particularly when hand holding. Loss of light means you're going to have to counteract that. Either you're going to have to increase the ISO or you're going to have to slow the shutter speed down. So that's definitely an important factor to bear in mind. Also, because you are losing light, you're potentially going to slow down the autofocus. So if you are using autofocus, and that could be an issue as well, you might find it's a little bit slower with the extension tube added. And the third thing is image quality, which I'm going to talk about more in depth later on. Uh, but basically, you can get surprisingly good image quality. It's not going to be as good as a dedicated macro lens, but you can get very sharp images from using an extension tube. Just to show you what I mean, I've got a Canon 50mm lens attached, what we call a standard lens. I'm going to show you how close I can get to this ragwort flower with just the lens attached. So I'm going to manually focus it to the minimum focusing distance as far as it will go. And then we're going to, going to move in. And it's actually to about there. So that's as close as I can focus just with the lens. And it's actually about 35 centimeters from the lens to the flower. I've now got the extension tube attached, uh, I've got the Canon 25mm extension tube, so I'm going to set it again to the minimum focusing distance, move in and see how close I can get. So now I can actually get to about there, massive difference. So before I could only get 35 centimetres away, now the distance between the end of the lens and the flower is actually about 9 centimetres. So I've been able to go in much closer, gives me more magnification and allows me to take macro shots that I wouldn't have been able to take before. In terms of image quality with an extension tube, I'm, I'm going to try and explain that as best I can. 
Um, lens designers, when they design lens, they try to reduce the distortion and they try to reduce the distortion in the lens depending on the focal range that is most commonly used at. That's definitely my understanding. So uh, a telephoto lens, you'd expect it to be used photographing things further away, a longer focal length. Whereas a macro lens, you'd expect it to be focused more of the time closer to its minimum focusing distance. So the, basically what I'm saying is every lens is going to be different uh, in terms of its optics, in terms of how the distortion has been reduced. So really it's hard to say how the lens is going to perform with an extension tube until you actually try it. My feeling is you're better to probably to use a prime lens rather than a zoom. I have used a Canon 35 to 70 millimeter in the past and that wasn't too bad at all. Today I'm using the Canon 50 mil 1.8 which is like a standard lens and you can take really really good sharp images with that an extension tube attached so basically every lens can be different just because the lens is fantastically sharp using on its own doesn't mean it's going to be fantastically sharp with an extension tube I am going to do a video out in the field where I'm actually going to use the extension tube with the 50mm lens so hopefully it'll be the next video probably insects and flowers if you're not subscribed do subscribe to the channel and check out my tutorials as well thanks for watching I'll see you next time Thank you.